Hi there and welcome to today's video. My name is Christina and today we're talking about trends and we're talking about trends that are maybe on their way out but they are trends that nonetheless I am keeping around and loving in my house. In today's video we're talking about five trends that I think are probably becoming a little overdone. They're kind of on their way out. The trends have shifted in this direction the pendulum has swung and these trends are kind of going out we've seen them we've done them but they're trends that i don't want to get rid of yet i want to keep around either because i got on the bandwagon too late or it took me a while to convince my husband to like it and they're trends that i don't want to have leave my house yet so and that's one thing, you know, I love trends and I'm sure you love trends if you're watching my video, but just because someone says that they're out, if you love it, keep it in your house. And with that, we'll get into the five things that I don't care if they're out of style, they're staying in my house. So number one is all white interiors. And as you can tell from behind me, I love all white. And I have an all white kitchen, I have all white baseboards, I have all white walls and I have all white linens. You see it all over Pinterest and YouTube and Instagram, it is all white, heavenly looking, ethereal looking homes, and they have all white walls and all white bedding and all white couches, all white kitchens. And I have about half of those, well, all but one. I don't have a white couch because I have four kids and I, that would be, and four kids, I could never, I don't know those people that have a white couch that stays white if you have four kids. I would love to meet that person. And I love white couches, but like in a magazine. But I have all white linens, I have all white walls, white baseboards, I have a kitchen that's all white. I love white and I love black. I love that combination. The whole white trend kind of came to be huge. I think in like 2016 or 17 and Benjamin Moore made their like color of the year Simply White by Benjamin Moore. And everyone painted their house Simply White. And ever since Simply White became the big thing, I think all the bloggers made their homes white, all the new builds are white, everyone's painting their walls white. And I tend to, to agree, I still love this trend. This is a trend that I think is still classic. I think this is a trend that became really popular, although I do think that white walls and white interiors are a classic staple in design that it's never out of style. It's just sometimes more trendy than other times. Kind of like a Burberry coat. There's times when like a trench coat is super, super in for fall and then the next year it might not be as in, but you're never gonna look unstylish in a trench coat. You'll always look chic and put together. And that's what I think about all white kitchens, all white walls, all white interiors. So while I think it's kind of moving out, I think color's coming in, I'm not painting my walls any other color. I love the white. Trend number two that I think is on the way out and maybe has, at least it's shifting, like all trends do, is gold and brass hardware in interior design and kind of came in in full force like five or so years ago and, and then it became black and then now it's kind of gone to satin nickel and my kitchen is in brushed nickel back about six or seven years ago and that was what everyone was doing. Then it went to gold. You know, it's, you can, I think they're always shifting and that's, that's the tricky thing about hardware and metals is there's so many different options that every like five years, I feel like the new trendy thing changes. And I think the next thing is gonna be the satin nickel and then it will be like chrome and then it will start back again. It just keeps, it just keeps changing. I think the next big thing too is kind of the unlacquered brass, not the brushed brass, but, but in my home, I'm going for all the brass and I still have some satin nickel from when we renovated our kitchen. And I actually don't mind the mixing and matching of hardware. You can't go too crazy. I don't think you can do like three or four options, but certainly two different hardwares throughout your house is fine. And I know there's plenty of designers that have done this to perfection. And when done right, it, you don't have to just get rid of all of your brass or all of your satin nickel or all of your black. But I do think that the brass is slowly gonna be going out and I love it. And I, it took me several years to convince my husband to like the brass. So now that I have, I, I'm not changing it. We're keeping it 
and that's the color that we're going for. And you know, it might be out and maybe it'll come back. I know when they bring trends back, they're always slightly different, so you feel like you have to change it. But you know, at some point you have to just pick something and stick with it. You can't always be changing your house. So this kind of goes back to choose what you love and I'm keeping the brass. If you love brass, it's okay to keep it because I'm keeping mine. All right, the third trend that I think is kind of on its way out and been overdone, which this one seems ridiculous, but it's right behind me, is the fiddle leaf fig tree. And you look at any blogger or any YouTuber, they all have this tree. And it seems silly that a plant can be trendy, like something that grows on God's earth can be a trend, but this plant has become trendy. I also think like Bird of Paradise have become trendy and Monstera have become trendy, and I've tried all these plants. I have killed all my bird of paradise, other than the ones that grow naturally in my front yard. I have beautiful birds of paradise that grow in my courtyard, but I cannot keep them alive in my house for whatever reason. But I recently just invested in two fiddle leaf fig trees, and I love them, and I'm hoping they'll grow huge and tall and grow to nine, 10 feet tall but it is a trendy tree and that's probably why I like it. If there was a different tree I kept seeing in my Instagram feed, maybe that's the tree I would have brought in. I'm influenced by trends as well, but this is a tree that has been overdone. You see it everywhere. And I think they're kind of, I think people are sick of seeing the same tree. I'm guessing there's going to be new plants coming into popularity soon because this one's on the way out. But if you love it, I love it keeping my fiddle leaf around. If you have a real fiddle leaf fig, don't throw it away because it's not trendy. That would be ridiculous. It's a live plant, keep it in your house. But I would say maybe, I don't like fake plants, so maybe steer away from the fake fiddle leaf. If you have a real live fiddle leaf fig tree, keep it in your house and go buy more. And so even though I think fiddle leaf figs have been overdone by every blogger and YouTuber and Instagrammer and Pinterester on the planet, I'm still keeping mine and I love them. And sometimes I wonder, do I actually love the look of a fiddle leaf fig or is it that I'm seeing it everywhere that I love it? And it's hard to ever, I don't think I have an answer, but I do think they're beautiful. They're green, they grow tall, what's not to like? But it is funny how trends work that way that you might not actually think it's beautiful, but the more you see it, the more you learn to love it and appreciate it. I'm keeping my fiddle leaf figs I don't care that they've been seen and been around the block and everyone knows it and sees it, but I'm keeping them. The fourth trend that I think people are sick of seeing and is kind of on its way out is minimalism. I love minimalism. I love to have empty spaces and clean lines and empty looking interiors that you wonder where are all your stuff and you don't have anything. And you, everyone wonders where all your stuff goes and the answer is you don't have very much stuff. I love that. And I know there's minimalism, like the lifestyle versus minimalism, the like home aesthetic. And there's some overlap there, but they are actually different things. You could be living a very non-minimalistic life, but have your home look minimalist. And I like, I can appreciate both sides. I think I fall more in the camp of your house looks minimalist because if you look around, I do have some things tucked away and my closet is like bursting at the seams. So I'm not an actual minimalist, but I love that calm look of clutter-free. It helps me not feel anxious. It helps me feel calm in my surroundings to have clean surfaces, very tailor-picked pieces. Having a few pieces that sing and speak for themselves in a space, I love that. And I really love the like modern minimalist. I think of like restoration hardware, which if you've on my channel, I have several videos about restoration hardware. I love that kind of style. And I feel like they get it just right of feeling homey and cozy, but being very clean and modern and minimal. And I think if you have pieces that you love and you choose them carefully, you don't need as many. You just have the few that you love. And that is like a design minimalism for me. But I think it's kind of a trend that's going out because I think people try to do it and realize that they kind of failed because they had too much stuff or they kept bringing in things. And then before you know it, you're not a minimalist anymore. You're a maximalist or somewhere in between. And even though I, so I think people are kind of going back a different direction and ditching the minimalism thinking it doesn't actually work in real life with kids. And 
I have four kids, I know. It's a struggle to make it work, but I try to keep my living spaces where, you know, my kitchen and my living room and my family room to be a bit more minimal. And then in our rooms, we obviously have things. My children have toys. We have our office, which has become my daughter's, basically her art room. She has tables, she has Rubbermaid tables set up where she just has art. And so if you see that part of my house, you would think we're not minimalists. But you turn to the other side and we have a clean kitchen with very little things out on the surfaces and so you know we're somewhere in between but I'm not getting rid of the minimalism look I'm still gonna try to achieve it come hell or high water I might not get there I think minimalism is a lot easier when you don't have a husband and children I can't imagine if you have pets I don't have pets so it's got to be hard but I love this design style and I am not ditching it even though it might be on its way out and the fifth trend that I think is probably on its way out it was kind of overdone overplayed people got sick of it are like the figurine busts and the figurine sculptural pieces and statues and the figurine and shape drawings of like the body silhouette and like the abstract art that's of like the human form. I think these have been overdone. I think they got really trendy. You were seeing it everywhere on social media and people were trying to copy that restoration hardware look and they were getting them at TJ Maxx. Artists were drawing the human form and restoration hardware was making these busts based off of Greek soldiers and heroes. And I think that they are on their way out. They have been way overdone and I love them. I showed in one of my hauls several months back a head of David, like David and Goliath. The, it's the Michelangelo, or is it Raphael? Who carved it? The original. It's in Italy. Michelangelo's David. It's Michelangelo. So Michelangelo's David. My dad lived in Italy for two years when he was younger and he had this, um, and we had this David head in our house all growing up. And when I was little, I used to like, I used to practice kissing on this head when I was like six or seven. And I went on my little hunt and I found like the exact one. It is solid, it is a piece of granite or marble, I'm not even sure. And I found it on eBay, one just like it, from Italy, it was signed. And I think it's the exact same thing that my parents have. So I have this in my house and I love it. And I'm, I actually have shelves that I've ordered that are back ordered like everything else in the world. And it, it's going to go on these shelves when the shelves get here. So it's currently tucked away somewhere safe. But this David head is gonna be proudly displayed in my home, even if it's a trend that's out, and it probably is. I also have this Studio McGee picture that is like the female silhouette, which I just think is precious and very pretty and feminine. And I'll probably put it in like my, in my master bathroom. I especially love the David because it's nostalgic from my childhood. It's a little more one of a kind. It was a little more expensive, but not everyone is gonna have it in their home. It's a little more unique. Whereas the Studio McGee one was mass produced at Target. So that one is a lot more commonplace. So I think it's been sold out for a long time. So the one was mass produced, one was less mass produced, but I'm incorporating it in little bits and pieces into my home. Even though I think it is a design style that was very trendy, I think it's on its way out. I think it's probably already left, but it's one that I think is classic. All these styles that I've talked about were definitely trendy in the last, five to six years. And even though they were trendy, there are things that I happen to love. And that's how I think you should decorate your home is with things that you love. Even if they are trends that have come and gone, if you still love it, keep it around and or invest in it later. Sometimes I'll find that there's trends that I just did not like when they first came out. And for me, that was boucle. And the more and more I saw it, I have fallen in love with it. And I want it everywhere now. And so this one I think is still going strong, boucle. But let's say you're still kind of not feeling boucle. And then like two years from now, you finally are like, yes, I see the magic. I love boucle now. It's probably on its way out by then and you wasted all that time. But even in two years, if you start to love it, that's okay, put it in your home. And I love to refresh my home with new fresh trends, but even the stale ones that might be dated or might be kind of out, if you love it, keep it in your house. And I know I've even made videos kind of being harsh about all the words that people put on their walls. And 
I'm a firm believer that if you love words or what that says, or it's meaningful to you, keep it on your wall. Even if every designer out there and every YouTuber is saying, get those out of your house, they're so ugly. If you love it, absolutely keep it in your house. And I hope this video was helpful. Hope it gave you the courage to keep whatever outdated thing you have in your house. And hope that you got some of my other videos where I talk about design and things that I am bringing into my home, things that I wanna get out of my home, things I think you should get out of your home. But again, those are just my opinions. Do what you love. And I hope this video was helpful and interesting. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please check out my playlist of other home interior videos that I've done. And please consider subscribing because I am almost at a thousand subscribers. That has been my goal. It seems like a huge milestone, even though I'm a very small YouTuber. It's exciting that I have almost a thousand of you that have liked my content or liked me enough to hit subscribe and stick around. I appreciate you. I appreciate when you watch my videos and I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye-bye.